Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and this is part six, and hopefully the last part of our saber dog. Let's adjust the light now that we don't have a box that's going to be reflecting. And it is exactly as I left it, probably, oh geez, what, two months ago? Ah, uh, being busy sucks. But I got the, got the van sorted out, I got the gift for Logan done. And I got uh, one episode of the tow truck done. Let's see if we can finish this off and get it off the workbench. So when last we saw it, I'd given it a nice coat of shiny silver paint. And I believe, I think, I've given it a coat of gloss coat. I might hit it with one more shot just to make sure it really is covered in gloss coat. But the main thing we need to do is to get the little rolly bits on the bottom, otherwise it was landing gear, and the detail painting done, and of course the decals, that'd be the icing on the cake. I'm on vacation this week, but not that it seems to make much difference, because I still will be at the part-time job for two nights. Uh, the engine needs a little bit of work, although it isn't, you know, a core part of the project. It doesn't necessarily have to be sitting beside it when it's all done, but it would be nice. So, I think the first thing we need to do is to get this paper towel out of there so we can start getting the uh, landing gear in place. Now, in case you hadn't seen the previous five parts of this, the flash on this kit was pretty ferocious. This big thing here, that's flash. So, a lot of cleaning up to do on the front landing gear, leg assembly. All right, time to install the rear landing gear. Wait a minute, how come one's white? Well, I went to the sprue and I got this one off, and then there was an empty spot where this one should have been. And I crawled all over the floor, thinking that maybe it had fallen out of the bag or something like that. Couldn't find it. I looked in the box where I had the sprues, they weren't there. Yes, I did look at the clutter zone. We can only focus on it. I didn't see it anywhere there. I'm quite certain I'm gonna find it in about six months time. So, and if anyone's like, geez, you're such a slob, Dan. How come everything is such a mess? Actually at work, I'm the neatest person there. I think I use up all of my OCD neatness stuff at work and there ain't nothing left by the time I get home. But anyway, there is the, the kit part. There's my part. Now, I don't have this cross section on the top, which I'm actually going to have to cut off on this one. The reason this one needs to have it cut off is they would have you install these before you put the wings together. They're supposed to be trapped. And, of course, I really didn't want the landing gear all hanging out while I was, um, you know, doing doing fuselage and wingy type stuff. And they have you do it that way so that, you know, the parts will flip back and forth and work and everything like that, which I wasn't interested in. So there we go. There's the original and there's my part. Probably beef here by maybe 10%, but I'm going to live with it. There we go. Nothing like a bit of unnecessary work to drag out a model. This is the original part that's mine. The... The T here at the top is going to be eliminated because, as I mentioned earlier, that's so that the landing gear can work and can flop in and out, which we're not going to have. And there we are. Basically, everything but the, the oleo, the compressor part, has been painted uh, tester steel and then given a um, panel wash by Tamiya. I think it looks pretty good. And I'm almost ready to glue these in place. The saber dog continues to limp across the line. Uh, while I was painting the rest of the fuselage, I took the precaution of painting the landing gear doors. So these are the main doors for the main landing gear. Well, as you can see, they're nice and silvery on the back or on the outside. And I was probably just going to paint them, you know, zinc chromate green on the inside. No biggie there. This. I thought was the main front landing gear door. It's not. It's 
the uh, the lower hatch for the for the missiles. So that's totally useless. And of course, I didn't even, for some reason or other, grab the landing gear legs for the main landing gear. So they are right there. So I, that's not the end of the world. I can give them a little coat of silver or steel or aluminum or something. Not the end of the world. But why on earth I didn't paint them at the same time I did these, I don't know. So I went to the sprues to find the front landing gear door. And you can see here it is from the outside. Let's get some focusing going on here. So you can see there's some some of the usual crud we find in this kit on the front side here. The back side. Oh my god, what the hell happened there? <laughs> Don't know what happened to the backside. That is terrible. Looks like somebody took a soldering iron to it. Not me. So this is going to require a little bit of cleanup because in the down position, of course, you can see this. So we'll see what we can do with that. But at least as you can see here in the clutter, it's sitting on the workbench. I've painted the nose anti-glare panel, but in the process, you could see uh, that I wasn't quite as perfect as I would have liked to have been on my nose sanding there, so I gave it a little bit more of a sand. I'm going to come back and do that again, but there's our landing gear in place. Basically, what I did is I put um, a blob of contact cement on the top of the leg and in the, in the well, and then I smooshed it in place. And then when that was dry, I ganged up a lot of super glue around it. And sometimes if you don't have a whole lot of mechanical strength, that's the best way to take care of that. And once again, you can look up inside there and see that really cool engine, which looks awesome, but it's probably wrong. But I'm not changing it because it looks awesome. And Lord knows this thing could use anything we got going for it. Once again, there's the interior of the main front landing gear door. Now I've ground out all of that crusty, well, I won't call it crap, it was plastic. It's, it actually was molded with the kit. I ground all that out of the three depressions, actually four if you include the little one at the front. And I suppose I probably could have just smeared the whole thing with the uh, filler and then sanded it down. But I kind of wanted to keep the, the, the indentations that the tool maker intended to be there because it does add some interest to the back of the part. So what I did is, because there's no way you're ever going to be able to sand that 100% smooth. So I took some white glue and I just painted over it. And the white glue will tend to fill up the, the, the lower bits, the gouges that I can't get out. And we'll see what that looks like when it gets painted some interior green. See how that looks. I mean, compared to what it was. There we are with a coat of zinc chromate on there. And... Not perfect, but I like I said, I could have smoothed the thing completely out, but I kind of like the idea that it has that, you know, some indentations in it. And it certainly honors what the tool maker had in mind when he did it versus the way it actually ended up being molded. So I'm going to leave it like this. I kind of like it looking like this. At least it doesn't look like a disaster. So I'll be gluing that on and that'll get all my gear doors in place. I can uh, show here. There you can see the, if I'd stop shaking, you can see the main gears are in place, as are the doors. Now, in a perfect world, I would have filmed me sticking this on the window. I think it was two months ago. And then uh, you could see me putting it on there with the leaves all on the trees and it looking all summer-like. And then we'd have me taking it off with snow in the background and winter starting. Oh well. At least I know it's well bleached out. Uh, putting on the decals. Icing the cake. And these decals, they're not terrible. They're not the worst I've ever used. However, what I did was I, I suspected that they were going to be really brittle because when I used... The, uh, the decal 
as a template for my instrument panel. It only stuck momentarily and then shattered. So I gave the decals a coat of the microscale liquid decal film. And I'm glad I did because they're still having a tendency to break up. But at least they're better than I suspect they would have been. Uh, just this one decal here broke in one spot. This one has a bunch of horizontal slashes in it. But it stayed together long enough for me to get it on the model. The big U.S. Air Force one, that one broke in several places. But once again, it pretty much held together enough for me to get it in place. So image-wise, yeah, you're talking when it was made back in the 70s. Not amazing, but not terrible either. Well, one thing I should mention, not that anyone is going to be, uh, not that there's flocks of people going to be buying this kit. These decals take forever to come off the backing film. Like, we're talking, put them in the water and wait, like, 10 or 15 minutes to the point where you end up just throwing tons in the water just so that you can manage to have something to do, not be totally bored. Now this model is definitely suffering from the being on the workbench way too long syndrome. And it's not the model's fault. It's the builder's fault. I'm just a little too busy and sleep just seems to be so darn important that I really wasn't working on it as much as I would have liked. As you can see, the decals are on. One thing I would like to call attention to is the space behind the pilot seat. Basically, the part that, uh, that has the little thimble thing sticking up, that's the only part that they actually give you in the kit. And actually, I, I wasn't even going to use that, mainly because I was looking at the space. I was thinking, that looks awfully bare. And I was thinking I was going to have to make up a bunch of stuff to go there. And then Natasha looked at the cover of the box. She said, I think there's a part that's got to go there. So we went through the instructions, and yeah, I completely forgot to install that part. I still thought it looked awfully bare, so... The rest of what you see in there is little bits of pieces of plastic that were laying around on the workbench that didn't move fast enough and so got glued into there. I think it looks okay. Now, the painting around the cockpit still looks a little bit rough. I need to touch that up, but a lot of that will be hidden once the canopy goes on. But we're definitely on the home stretch, and I'll be glad to get this one done. Not that I didn't enjoy building it, but... It just sat on the workbench way too long. So what I thought was going to be maybe a month and a half, two month long project turned into, oh, let's see, I think we're talking five months. But I wasn't working on it continuously. But here it is, the F-86D Saber Dog, which was the long range, uh, well, I shouldn't say long range, it was the um, it was the early all-weather interceptor that, uh, it was basically a stopgap, really. Um, they took a successful plane, the F-86, and they gave it a search radar and more of an intercept roll until the Northrop Scorpion was ready, actually. So, and... As I mentioned during the the first episode, this model has a checkered history. Uh, it was originally um, originally done by a Japanese model company back in the early 60s. And then it's been boxed by at least three or four different manufacturers. And uh, this is the this is the Entex release. Now Entex, they had oh all kinds of different uh, models available, none of which were their own, but really it ranged from 125th scale cars. They had some 116th scale cars, I believe. They had a steam tractor at one point. Uh, basically they just kind of picked and choosed through other manufacturers' catalogs and, uh, 
and then box them as their own with their permission, of course. So this was definitely not the easiest plane I've ever built. And I'm pretty sure Ravel has done an F-86D and probably better detail and everything like that. But I don't regret building difficult kits. I rather enjoy it. And the actual basic parts, the, the tooling was pretty good in this. It's just the something went badly awry in the molding department and there was just so much flash it wasn't funny, which is why I initially int introduced it as Flash Gordon. The cockpit, and I haven't glued the um, I didn't glue the canopy on. Let's bring him into the fore. The canopy or the cockpit itself, um, the the seat and the floor were heavily kit bashed and uh, um, I think the only thing in there that's original to the kit is the actual basic L-shaped part of the seat. Everything else has been added to it. I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to go back to episode one or two to get the grisly details. But it was fun taking a kit that was, you know, not not the most well engineered, and making a pretty good replica out of it. And it's really a product of its day when uh, models were still expected to be built by kids and. They wanted some play value in it. They wanted to be able to make the landing gear go up and down. And, you know, oh, that's the other thing. That I did actually leave removable is the, um, watch it won't come off now. It's only fallen off a dozen times, is the radome. That's about the only thing I left movable was the radome itself. And probably the... Radar equipment in there is completely fanciful, but it doesn't look that bad. So I decided to leave it as, as a removable part. Well, you can just stay off then. If I flip it around and we look inside the landing gear bay, you can see that the engine is up in there. And I've already said, I'm pretty sure there probably would have been some sort of a bulkhead or something in there. But it does look kind of cool looking up in there and seeing the engine. Which is why I decided to leave it that way. So all things considered, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, the decals threatened to fall apart on me, but I managed to save those. So thanks for watching my build of the Entex 148 scale, actually 150 scale, it's close enough, uh, F86D. And until next time, just keep on modeling.